It's Heels on Wheels, the racing show by female racers, for female racers, about female racers, featuring female racers, with a few surprises thrown in. <laughs> Heels on Wheels is brought to you by Renew Salon and Spa, Excelsior Racing, and Dragonflies and Nymphs Creation. And now, here are your hosts, Krista Elise, Taylor Hyatt, Gene Kinzer Dana, Stacy Grammer, and Emily Gotti. Thanks for tuning in to the Heels on Wheels radio program. I'm the executive producer, Taylor Hyatt, and we have an amazing show lined up for you today. First, let me introduce our host, Gene Kinzer Dana, who knows all about Pirelli World Challenge, Stacy Grammer, with years of experience in road racing, Krista Elise, with her knowledge of drag racing, and Emily Gotti, who was our circle track expert. Now, on to the reason we're all here, the guests. We have NHRA drag racer, Lindsay Cramsey, and female mechanic and car enthusiast, Jackie Barlow. Now, is technology in cars getting to be just a little too much? Stick around for our roundtable discussion to hear what our ladies have to say. KDP is back with more from Beauty's Got Muscle, and as always, Chef Sizzle and Scotty with another great grill and dish. So let's put those heels in drive and get this show on the road. Let's talk racing news, ladies. Now, there's a lot going on in the racing industry right now, as always, but we're in the middle of award season and all the different shows for the industry. Krista, what's going on in your drag racing world? You know, there are two big things that I want to highlight tonight. The first one, for you local racers, East Coast, Virginia, Maryland, don't forget that Maryland International Raceway actually has their annual racers banquet coming up February 15th, and it's always a really good time, so check that out. Uh, the second thing for me is I'm still stuck on this. John Force Racing parts ways with Ford and Castrol. Thing. I know that happened back in August, but, I mean, it's going to be amazing to see what happens with that. You know, ever since I started following John, they have been a tight triangle. But, you know, on a positive note, who wouldn't want to pair up with the king of uh, drag racing? Exactly. You can't get much better than that. So, in the road racing world, um, which is where Stacy and I are usually, there's a lot going on already. They're starting their season. SCCA Eastern Conference has already had two race weekends, one at Sebring, one at... Um, Palm Beach, and they all went really well. Great weather down there. Stacy, what's going on down your way in Florida? I know we have the Rolex and all kinds of stuff coming up. Well, in North Florida, it's been really beautiful weather. It's uh, There's a lot going on in the racing world, a lot of preparations for the 24 hours of Daytona. We're only 10 days away from the 24-hour, and the area is just full of racers, uh, getting ready, the team's coming down, getting ready for the race. Um, there's there's just so much going on. It's hard to talk about it in such a few few minutes, but um, it's there's a lot to watch with the new series, with the ALMS um, Grand Dam combination series. Yeah, I, that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. It's going to be so interesting with the teams that where you have these wonderful racers from both series all coming together to compete and all these new um new rivalries will be springing up and there's so much buzz about who's going to do well and who's not going to do well exactly and i Um, think like you said the weather down your way has been absolutely beautiful lately and i mm -hmm. guess that's why we start our seasons down there so early but can you both agree january is a little early for me i like a little bit of an off season I definitely think you need the, the off time. As a racer, especially one who travels a lot, uh, you don't want to get burnt out. But, you know, at the same time, if you really want to be competitive, it's so important to take advantage of that that downtime after you take, you know, a little maybe month off and, you know, get some seat time, get to know your car again, make sure everything is up to par to start the season off right. Exactly. Very true. Very true. So I know the three of us aren't, really too into NASCAR, but I did read something this morning and NASCAR put out a statement saying, stay tuned. January is going to be full of announcements. Now there's some changes going on with the Earnhardt company and all that. Do you guys have any idea what those big announcements might be? You know, unfortunately from a personal perspective, I spent so much time following the racers in NHRA that 
Uh, I don't really get much time to look up on NASCAR news, but uh, let me tell you. You tell me that, and I will find out. Yeah, I'm looking. I mean, I've, I'm really looking forward for what's coming just because they haven't done too much lately in the way of changes. So I'm thinking maybe this might be a good thing for them and we can actually start getting some more people involved. And I mean, I know a lot of people are not against NASCAR, but they don't follow it just because it's not as technical maybe as some of the road racing and road courses and that kind of thing. But, you know, if they get some new technology in the cars, get some new things going on, I think it could really make a big difference. Hey, did you see that uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s, uh, his paint te- scheme has actually changed from what we are all used to and we've grown to love. Exactly. Oh, really? yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's actually taken on uh, Ragu as a big sponsor, it looks like. Yeah, there's been a lot of that going on lately. A lot of sponsor changes, which is, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's nice to just freshen up, um, you know, it, it, you have to keep that branding for your driver, but when when such a major driver has such a big following, I mean, his fans are so loyal. They'll follow him anyway. Yeah, exactly. I know there was a lot of controversy about um, a new rookie coming in and using the number three for his car. That A lot of people are not happy with that. No, I didn't hear about that, but I did hear, um, aren't they running the Gen 6 car this year, which, uh, you know, for NASCAR is just a huge move forward with technology. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, changes up the racing dynamic at the track. Definitely. Um, I do want to mention real quick, um, World Rally is in Monte Carlo this week. They're here Mm -hmm. all week long. I think this is their first event of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So that might be something to watch. Uh, this weekend. That's going to be a really exciting race with some really good competition going on. The um, The rally world is, is buzzed as well because there is a North American series that's going to be up and running this year, and a lot of folks are sitting back waiting to see if that's going to do well and who's going to participate in it. Yeah, it's definitely, it's going to be fun to watch i love watching that just because i would never be able to do that they are yeah. crazy you know not I would love off, it. did you hear I about the totally race in the car it. i was actually uh reading about that last week and you know the controversy is coming up now about driver death yeah and the car race and i'm just you know i'm not surprised because of uh the surroundings that they're running in but, you know, there there are injuries and deaths and all sorts of racing. But it, it seems that, that uh, because of how, you know, what the racing is becoming extremely prevalent. I mean, how do you guys feel about that? You know, should should that race out of, you know, all sorts of different racing come to the forefront as, you know, being the most uh, talked about race as far as injuries, deaths? I mean, all sorts of things happen. Racing is dangerous. Anybody who goes into racing and doesn't understand that that one fact, then they probably shouldn't be racing. And I hope, you know what, I'm all for uh, is for safety, but I hope that they don't try to institute a bunch of drastic changes. All right, well, let's leave that for another discussion for a roundtable for today. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for our racing news this week. On a lighter note, let's go see what Bob and Scotty are cooking in the kitchen today. Thanks very much, Taylor. This is Sizzle and Scotty, and glad to be here and glad to be part of the show. We've got a fantastic recipe today, and actually really one that's near and dear to my heart. I was contacted by the Rachel Ray Show recently to uh, film a video uh, about tailgating and about cooking and being the big Buffalo Bills fan that I am. um, Did something near and dear to my heart, which is a fried bologna sandwich. So, Taylor, let's get right into the ingredients. This is a really easy recipe, one that you can do at the tailgate, one that you can do in your backyard grill, or even one that you can do right in the safety of your own kitchen. So let's get right to the ingredients. Pretty simple. We're going to make four sandwiches. So we're going to use two uh, sweet onions, and we're going to slice those up. We're going to use two green bell peppers. We're going to slice those up. We're going to have four nice slices of good American cheese. Uh, some people like to use a sharp cheddar, but for, for this recipe that is uh, near and dear and, and indicative of Buffalo, New York, we're going to use just some, some regular American cheese. 
Uh, then we're also going to have four slices, and these are going to be fairly thick slices of your favorite bologna. Um, Oscar Mayer, Russer bologna, whatever you'd really like, but these, these slices need to be about a quarter of an inch thick, a little bit on the thick side. Then we're going to use four soft Kaiser rolls, and you can get these at your local bakery, and these, are, these have a little bit softer texture to them, and, and typically the good ones that we liked are, are covered in uh, cornmeal uh, that gives it a nice little texture too. So Taylor, with that said, let's get right into doing this. We're going to, as I said, slice up our peppers and onions, and we're going to saute those with a little bit of butter and a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to use uh, medium-high heat. We're going to saute those up, and that's going to take us probably about three to five minutes. We really don't want to rush this. We want to make sure that they have a chance to really cook really well. And they're going to brown, actually, get some caramelization on that. And the nice thing that I like to do, Taylor, is I like to throw in a little bit of uh, seasoning. Now, you can use your own special spice rub, salt and pepper, wh whatever you prefer. But let those, let those peppers and onions cook up really, really nice. And then after they're done, we're going to take those out of the, out of the frying pan or griddle top or whatever you're using. And we're going to reserve those into a bowl. And once we get that... Uh, griddle top back hot again. We're going to lay down a little bit of margarine. And this is a little bit, uh, this is a buffalo tailgate thing that we use margarine, not butter, not oil, but we use that margarine. And we're going to lay that margarine down. We're going to get that uh, fry top nice and hot. And we're going to lay down our pieces of fried bologna. And, and I can almost smell them sizzling right now. Uh, they're going to, uh, over a medium high heat, going to brown those up really, really nice. Uh, once you've got a good uh, cook on one side. You're going to take your spatula and you're going to put an X. You're going to actually cut an X. Just poke your spatula down into each piece so that it lets the steam and heat come through there. It's also going to keep the, the piece of bologna from warping or, or changing shape. You're going to flip that over onto the other side, cook that up so that it's nice and cooked up really well, and then you're, gonna, you're basically going to throw, that, uh, throw those pieces of uh, cheese on there, let that cheese melt, Plate it up now by getting the bun, lay down that nice piece of fried bologna with the cheese all melted on there. We're going to take those seasoned, sautéed peppers and onions, put those right on top, and then top it off with that top of the bun. Now, the nice thing is you can use some spicy mustard, uh, you can use some barbecue sauce, or I like some, uh, some cayenne pepper sauce to go on there. So it works out really good. So, Taylor, that's the recipe. It works really, really well. It's a great sandwich. Uh, you can find this and all of our recipes uh, on the Heels on Wheels Facebook page. You can also find it on my page, and that's Tailgate Grilling with Sizzle and Scotty. Give us a like. Give us a suggestion on what you'd like to see on a future show, and we appreciate your feedback. So this is Sizzle and Scotty for Heels on Wheels, and we'll be right back. Motorsports sales professionals. Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated's Performance Motorsports Network is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our motorsports programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444 or email sue at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. That's 717-749-0444 or email sue at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, I'm Melissa Etheridge for RAD, recording artist against drunk driving. Your lifestyle is your business, but when you drive drunk, you become everyone's business. Don't drink and drive. Be responsible. Choose a designated driver. Music lives, and so should you. Please, don't drink and drive. You've been busting your ass for 10 years, gigging at every honky-tonk and dirtbag bar in the region, and your manager says you and your band should be really excited about getting paid two or 300 bucks for doing five or six-hour gigs. Really? 
If you've got the chops and you're looking to step up the ladder to serious representation, consider Killstack Music Group. The staff at Killstack will listen to you and understands that getting you out in front of the public is a team effort that takes time and dedication. Hey, you know there's no such thing as an overnight sensation, but quality representation is an absolute must to get your career on the fast track. Hit them up at welcome at killstackmusic.com or go online to killstackmusic.com and see what Killstack Music Group can do for you. You got it locked. The Heels on Wheels, the Performance Motorsports Network.com, a member of the Scorpion Radio Group. Now back to the women wearing the driver's suit. Welcome back, race fans and gearheads. This is Chris Elise with Taylor Hyde and Stacey Grammer back on Heels on Wheels Radio. And we are here this week with a special drag racing guest. So we have Lindsay Cramsey on the line. And uh, Lindsay is actually an NHRA drag racer. She has a pretty cool story. And it looks like she's out of uh, Colorado. Uh, Lindsay, how are you? Hi, guys. I'm doing very well. How are you? Oh, fine. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I am very excited to be here. So uh, it's a very cool for me personally as a drag racer to talk to, uh, you know, NHRA competitors because they're, they're just so, I mean, like I said, there's just so much competition going around. So, uh, you know, originally I was reading that you won the Super Comp class in NHRA. So tell us a little about that. Yeah, so I, I actually started in Super Comp just a, a couple of years ago. I, I purchased a car um, right out of college, um, and I, I've always been involved in drag racing. I started uh, when I was very young, and so uh, a couple of the accomplishments that I've had in the last couple of years are I made it to the final round um, in the divisional event at Bandemir Speedway, Then I was also able to make it to the, the final round of a national event at Bandemir Speedway, so um, it's always you know very good to, to be in the money round. I can tell you that much. Oh, absolutely. I, I swear, racing is so expensive, and it just never gets any easier to get sponsorship either. I mean, you know, <laughs> looking at your pictures, I see this gorgeous little blonde girl rolling around in this Barbie Jeep. I mean, <laughs> did you ever think that you were going to start that young? <laughs> You know, honestly, the the stories that my parents tell me, I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do the the exact same thing with my children, but it's definitely um, you you get addicted to it. So my parents tell me that they brought me to the tra- track the very first time um, when I was three days old, and so I immediately thought, well, no wonder I can't hear anything. Can you even put ear protection on an infant? You know, I don't even know how that works. Um, so it was a very very young age and. Yeah, my my dad with that Barbie Jeep, I was only three years old, um, and they bought it for my third birthday, and I think our videos are within five days, he actually doubled the voltage, so it basically had double the horsepower, um, so I could do donuts, I could jump curbs, I was crazy. That is some Tim the Toolman Taylor <laughs> home improvement right there. <laughs> exactly. We even had to install a, a special seatbelt, but the problem was I couldn't ever get the seatbelt off myself. My hands just weren't strong enough. So when the um, the Barbie Jeep, its demise, it actually caught on fire due to some uh, miscalculations, <laughs> I believe, that my dad made. Um, and so that was a very traumatic event, but I made it through. You know, my dad sometimes calls me the test dummy, so I, I can I can get through mostly anything. Wow, that is crazy. Hey, Lindsay, this is Taylor. Um, so I have a question. You work full-time. You have a full-time job other than racing, and you're also racing, I think I read, 40 races a year. Is that correct? <laughs> that is correct, yes. How do you do a full-time job and race all the time? It's it's extremely difficult. It, it, it takes a lot of work. I have a, a planner that I kind of plan everything out in. Um, I actually just recently, I got a new planner, and so I started scheduling everything and putting all the races down. I also just started um, traveling a lot for work, and I started to look at it, and I was saying, oh, man, I don't know if I can do it. But, you know, when it, with racing, when it's something that you really love, it doesn't always feel like work, even if it's something that you don't want to do. I, I do not enjoy doing maintenance on my car. I hate having to work on it and change oil. I can do it all. I just don't like to. Um, <laughs> Um, but it's a lot. My my boyfriend and I, we travel together. Um, so that makes it nice because we're able to switch off driving. Um, so we only get so many paid time days off. 
And so a lot of times we leave on Thursday night and we'll drive all night and try to get there for the Friday morning uh, time trials. Wow. So yeah, I, I see on your schedule and your accomplishments, by the way, that not only did you uh, get the 2012 National Dragster Challenge Championship, but you also uh, were runner-up at uh, with something I know a lot about, the Super Chevy Show in 2012. So you two were pretty much a little bit of everything. I mean, not <laughs> only racing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I race a full schedule at our home track, um, Bandemir Speedway, and so we've had the the Super Chevy Show a, a couple of years now, and it's such a fun event. It's a, you know, we I think it's three or four days almost of racing. We get to do jackpots, and um, it's it's always fun, and I I really enjoyed that race for sure. Tell us a little bit about your dragster. So my dragster is a 2001 Mullis. Um, that's the chassis maker. This year I'm, I'm moving up from a 555 um, big block Chevy to a 582. Um, so I'm really excited. It, it shouldn't be a huge increase in horsepower, but um, it'll help a little bit, that's for sure. And I actually bought the car in 2012. Uh, I, so I graduated college in three years, and the whole time I worked and I, I tried to save up as much money as I could um, and then finally I found a car actually on RacingJunk.com that was a good deal and it was what I wanted. And so far it's been really great. It's a very competitive car. Um, it has a four-link chassis, so I don't worry about having to, you know, worry about spinning the tires or, you know, if the track isn't prepped as good. I, I've done um, very well so far and I've been really happy with it. Hey, Lindsay, this is Stacy. Um, tell us a little bit about the contest you're involved in. Yeah, absolutely. So something that I've been um, working on this winter is um, the Always a Champion contest through Champion Spark Plugs, and mm-hmm. it was it was really fun. My brother and I actually went and we created our own videos um, for this contest. And, and what it is is they're looking um, across the United States and also in all different types of motorsports, um, dirt, snow, and water, as well as asphalt. And they're looking for someone to kind of represent Champion Spark Plugs. Um, so right now is the voting period. It actually goes till uh, February 2nd. And you can go to alwaysachampion.com, and you can search for Lindsey Cramsey or Cramsey, and you can vote for both me and my brother to win um, a, a couple of different types of sponsorships. So either um, the top 15 get a $5,000 sponsorship, and then there's a grand prize winner who gets $50,000. What would the one thing uh, you would say that sets you apart from other uh, racers? and enthusiasts? You know, that's really tough. There is a a ton of of really, really tough competition um, in the contest. And I think that, you know, we're all a lot alike in the sense that we all work really hard. We're all really dedicated to the sport. Um, I've seen a lot of people that it was all kind of a family thing, the way that mine is with, you know, their dad and their mom going out to the track. And, um, you know, I started the exact same way. And I think probably the, the biggest thing that sets me apart is just, really kind of being a one-woman show (laughs) more than anything. You know, I get a lot of help along the way, but a lot of it is still um, comes down to me. And so it's, you know, I have to figure out what's wrong on my car, fix anything that's broken, um, and I front 99% of the bill as well. (laughs) Um, Anything else, I I do have a couple of kind of smaller um, partnerships I work with. Uh, Lucas Oil and Brown and Miller Racing Solutions, but uh, most of it is all on me. <laughs> yeah, but you se- you seem like you have some really good sponsorship. Um, everybody could always use more sponsorship. Oh yeah, absolutely, and especially in drag racing, you're you know winning and losing races by thousands of a second, and so it it really comes down to having the best car. Uh, the best products on the car, but also being able to mentally focus. And so I have a couple of sponsors, but it does get tough sometimes when, you know, I'm driving somewhere and, you know, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I have to check the bank account a couple of times and, you know, make sure that, okay, I can still use my credit card on this one or still use my debit card. So it makes it easier to to not have to focus so much on the, the monetary aspect and really go out and win races. So you're so seriously involved in drag racing. Have you ever thought about getting seriously involved in any other type of racing? You know, I don't have a lot of experience in other types of racing. And in Colorado, we're kind of, there's not a, a ton of other things. We have round round tracks, um, but we don't have a NASCAR track. And we only have really one main drag strip. 
um, in Colorado. I only live about two minutes away from it. So I've, you know, I won't have any experience in it, but I, I do love um, motorsports in general and just kind of have a passion for cars. So, you know, if I had the opportunity, I, I, I wouldn't turn it down, that's for sure. Well, Lindsay, and, uh, back to the, the subject of sponsors, if we wanted or a sponsor, a potential sponsor wanted to find you, how do they find you? So I have a couple of places. Um, I have a marketing degree, so I've been trying to kind of get myself out there. Uh, I do have a website. It's lindsaycramsey.com. Um, and then I'm very active on social media sites. Um, Facebook.com slash Miss Lindsay Cramsey is my Facebook page. And then I have a Twitter as well. That's just at Lindsay Cramsey. So a couple of ways I, I do monthly blog um, and then a couple of other things as far as Pinterest goes and that sort of thing. You know, and I have oh, one question. If you, if you could say one goal for your upcoming 2014 season, what would you be focusing on? Um, that's kind of a tough one. I have uh, a lot of goals going into 2014, but one of the things that I always look back on and I always kind of, you know, I guess would be considered my mantra is it's not necessarily how good you are compared to other people, but just really how far you've come and how far um, you as a person improve in general. And so that's really what I always strive to do is, you know, am I better than I was yesterday? You know, even if it's the small things, <laughs> not necessarily always was I better at reaction time or was I better, um, you know, at the finish line, bracket racing, that sort of thing. But even just, you know, I'm getting a little bit better each year is my goal. That's a really great attitude to take, I think. Oh, thank you so much. Bob saying, nope, it's in racing who gets, who gets to the light first. You know, that's partially true, but I see a lot of people highlighted within motorsports or, you know, sports in general who present themselves well, who, you know, go out and get themselves seen, keep a good attitude and present a positive image. So, you know, like she said, I think that's just so important to remember that you're not going to always win, but, you know, to continue placing, uh, you know, successfully, uh, even if you don't win, I think that's important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You learn very quickly in drag racing that, you know, you have a split second to make the, the make decisions on the racetrack, and they're not always right, and more than often, they're not right. And so, you know, you'll lose a ton more races than you win, and so that's the, the most important part is you have to just keep going. You Every time that you mess up, you learn, and... You know, even if, you know, a lot of times we even say that when you win, you don't go back and really evaluate what you did. You just, okay, good, I won, and you move on. And so really what makes you kind of stop and, and understand what happened is a loss. And so those are so important to, to keep growing as a person and as a drag racer. Lindsay, it's so true that you definitely have to learn from what you've done and use it to better yourself in the future. I just want to thank you for being with us today. We're, we're about out of time, but, you know, we'd love to catch up with you for the 2014 season and see what's going on. Thank you for calling in. Sure. Thank you, girls, so much. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody, this has been Lindsay Cramsey, NHRA racer on Heels on Wheels Radio, and we'll be right back after this. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue, shopping around for your racing gear, driving from store to store only to find they don't have what you want? Barter's Racing Collectibles on Black Gap Road in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania has it all. The hottest NASCAR, IRL, and NHRA diecast, t-shirts, jackets, flags, and more. Everything racing. 
stop by or check out their website, www.partnersracing.com, or call 717-352-2782. You'll be surprised at the selection, prices, and friendly client service. UPS, FedEx, and USPS shipping available. Farners Racing Collectibles, www.farnersracing.com or call 717-352-2787. Farners Racing Collectibles, where racing comes alive. This is Heels on Wheels on the Performance Motorsport Network.com. Now, back to the fastest ladies on four wheels. We're back with the Heels on Wheels radio program. I have female mechanic and car enthusiast Jackie Barlow here to tell us a little bit about herself and her story. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. I also have Krista Elise and Stacy Grammer here with me. So tell us a little bit about your story. I mean, we don't get a lot of female mechanics on the show. Um, well, it started, uh, I was pretty young, um, my dad used to take me into his shop with him. He worked at a bunch of different shops, and it started with, hey, just hold the light for me, and then it got into me actually watching what he was doing, and, uh, you know, he started teaching me, and from there it just kind of built up. Um, after high school, or during high school, actually, I took an automotive class, um, and that was fun for a while. They, I had talked to the teacher about doing a post-secondary class, and he said, well, you're pretty far ahead you don't need it so right after high school I started working for my dad full-time at his motorcycle shop uh, Bustin' Knuckles Custom Cycles in Martinsburg and I've been there ever since we do anything from custom builds um, to just regular service work um, you know it's a lot of fun and you're right you don't see a lot of girls in it now and I think that's pretty cool to to be able to you know share my story like this you know, uh, you are a custom bike builder, uh, you know, a mechanic. Uh, I was actually told that you're even a fabricator. And uh, the motorcycle industry is very heavily male-dominated. Do you find it difficult to get respect for your work, or do you find that it's pretty easy? Um, you know, it depends. You have the occasional people who want to, uh, they'll call the shop and they'll ask to speak to somebody in the service department, and when I tell them it's me, they'll sometimes, you know, be a little leery of it. But um, for the most part, when I take my bike to shows and I tell people that, you know, I built this, I did the work on it, uh, they usually have a lot of respect for that. Um, I think some people might find it hard to believe. Um, but, yeah, it just it kind of just depends on who you're dealing with. Do you think it's intimidating at all? Um, you know, sometimes... Uh, Sometimes it, you feel like you need to kind of measure up uh, to the guys. Um, but, you know, I find sometimes a lot of girls pay a lot more attention to detail. Um, like with my bike, that's I get a lot of compliments on it because they're like, man, I've, you know, I see a lot of guys that they'll build stuff and they'll look over small things, you know, um, wiring. They'll, they'll look over, you know, tucking the wires and, and making everything clean and nice and, um, I think that's one of my strong points there. I actually pay attention to those little details. It can get intimidating sometimes, but um, for the most part, it's not that bad. You kind of learn to deal with it. Tell us about your bike project. What did you build? What uh, you know, what platform did you work off of? Well, um, my dad picked it up for $200. It's a 71 Honda CB500. Um, when he brought it to me, it looked like it had been drug out of the woods. But uh, one of his rules were, if you're going to ride a bike, you have to build it, um, which was his rule with anything. So, you know, I started, I first I hardtailed it. I ended up chopping the frame and fabricating that myself. Um, I used uh, actually wrist pins for support and plug welded them uh, and just a little bit of heating and bending. It wasn't a bolt-on hard kit. Um, I did that all myself. And... Uh, I made custom side plates for it to hide all of my wiring and batteries. Uh, I used a tank off of a 71 Indian Enduro, which is really cool. You don't see those a whole lot. Um, I was going for a, an old board tracker look, and that's what it ended up looking like. It looks completely different from where it started out and uh, definitely lightened it a lot, so it should be a lot faster <laughs> than it was. Um, the motor's mostly stock. Uh, it ran pretty good when I got it, so I didn't feel the need to tear into it. Plus, I have 
a bunch of other projects that I've been putting my money towards. Um, I also work on cars. I have a 68 El Camino that I'm restoring and a 71 Pontiac Le Mans Sport Convertible, uh, slowly getting the pieces for those. <laughs> Jackie, this is Stacy. I was wondering, it, it sounds like you've done some really awesome projects, and I wonder if there's any place we can see some of the work you've done online. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, if you go to uh, Bust Knuckles Custom Cycles, we have a Facebook page, um, mm-hmm. and there's some pictures on there you can see. Um, my bike, I'm pretty sure, is on there. If not, you can see it on my Facebook page, um, just under Jackie Barlow. Awesome. Do you have any projects in your mind coming up? I mean, you know, I know uh, fabricators, especially, I mean, you've done all sorts of custom, I mean, customize everything on your bikes, you know, and do you, sometimes you have something in your head that you, you are just waiting and itching to build when you're done your first one. Is that there anything for you? I actually do. Um, I actually had a guy come in and offer me to, uh, trade my bike for a 90 soft tail um so i'm planning on doing a springer soft tail here soon and i've always had this idea in my head i want i really like batman and i really want to do a batman bike and i have all these really cool ideas i just need to get down and and put it on paper and figure out how i want to do it and not make it look really cheesy but (laughs) that's always something that i've just thought that would be really cool and i want to do it you know, I've seen the Springer soft tails actually a lot, um, you know, lately around the bike show world. So I think that would be excellent. Yeah, yeah. The Springers, you definitely see a lot. Um, they're, the soft, I mean, it's a really good trade for my bike. I pretty much went from a, a bike that was worth maybe three grand on a good day to about six grand. So for my first build, I made a really good profit off of it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, You work on bikes as well as cars, and you've done a lot of projects. You have to have one favorite that really sticks out that took the most time and all that kind of stuff car-wise. I know your bike is probably your favorite, but car-wise, what's your favorite thing that you've done? Um, Car-wise, I would say, uh, and it's not done yet, but would be my 71 Pontiac Le Mans. Um, My dad, uh, when I was 15, actually picked the car up and kind of told me to to go at it and um ever since then i've been just trying to i mean you know projects are expensive so i'm trying to get the money together to get it done you know but but once that car is done it's got just so much sentimental value just because my me and my dad will probably end up restoring it together and i think that that's you know just something that you can't put a price on so you know that funny that you mentioned your dad and amazing dad for being so involved and you know uh facilitating getting you involved in uh motorsports fabrication on mechanics in general so uh, do you think that that has helped your family dynamic and your family relationship over the years oh definitely um you know me and my dad we've always had a really good relationship and, uh, you know, he, he's always been one to tell you, you know, you have to work for everything, you know. We, he's never just handed us things. Um, but he does, you know, if you do what you're supposed to do, he does help you out, just like with my bike, you know, um, $200 and, and tells me to go at it. And then, uh, you know, his idea behind it, and it's definitely true, is once you're done with something like that, you appreciate it so much more. It's kind of like giving a 16-year-old, um, you know, uh, Mercedes Benz and, and just telling them, you know, be careful with it. Well, they're not going to appreciate that because they didn't put time and effort into it. And, you know, they didn't put the work in. So that's, you know, my dad's always tried to instill those good morals into us. And I think he does a really good job at it. And I said, we get along great. We work together. We never have any issues. So it's, it's really nice getting, having the opportunity to work with him. Family support is definitely very important to to any endeavor, especially one like yours. I think I've got a quick definitely. question for you. Is um, I recently picked riding back up after a very long hiatus, and um, I'm admittedly a nervous ninny. Did you <laughs> ever have any fear of getting on that bike and going out and riding on the street? Um, you know. 
there was a time where I was a bit nervous, um, but I had been on dirt bikes ever since I was eight. So I had kind of uh, built myself up to that. Um, and then as soon as I got my bike done, I went out and actually took the um, motorcycle course, and they start you out like you've never even seen a bike before. So mm-hmm. they kind of take really baby steps, and that kind of gets you back on the road after, you know, because I actually rode dirt bikes for a while and then quit for a while there while I was actually building mine. So mm-hmm. it was nice to have that to kind of build yourself back up to it. Uh, do you think the experience on the dirt bike really is key into learning to handle a, a, a street bike? Well, you know, you're going to have a weight difference, definitely, um, but it, it gives you that, you know, clutch and brake. It, it lets you uh, get some more experience of what you need to do with your hands. And uh, so when you do get on a bigger bike, the really only difference that you'll need to learn is um, to actually lean into your turns, whereas to a dirt bike you can just kind of turn the bars where you want to go. Right. That is a big difference, but I, I did find yes. a picture of your bike online. I'm going to explore that a little bit later, but that is really a beautiful piece of machinery. You've done an awesome Thank job. you. So before we go, I have to ask this question. Um, I know you've grown up in the mechanic world and all that, but in your free time, are you a little bit of a girly girl who likes shopping and shoes, or are you full-blown mechanic? Uh, you know, honestly, I, I was just talking with my mom about this. It's funny because my mom, she's kind of a, she's not very girly either. So, we, you know, we hate shopping, can't stand it. Um, I, you know, I try to be girly every now and then, but really in my free time, I'm usually in the garage or, or tinkering on something. Um, but, you know. There, there's a time to be girly and a time to not be. Um, I'll still dress up and do things occasionally, but not much. It's it's usually full blown mechanic. <laughs> All right. Well, it has been great talking with you today. You've got some really great stuff going on, and we sure like to check back in with you. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for having me. No problem. This has been Taylor Hyatt with Crystal Elise and Stacy Grammer with Jackie Barlow, our female mechanic and car enthusiast. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Exceptional service on every visit. That's what our clients have come to expect at Renew Salon and Spa. Renew Salon and Spa's team of friendly experts specializing in hair care, nails, massage, and skin care offer the highest quality service to give you the look you want. Their staff of experienced professionals attend seminars, clinics, and workshops to stay on top of the latest trends in hair design. From color to foils and cuts, gel nails, manicures, facials, and pedicures, you will leave with a salon experience like no other. Check our website for monthly specials. Renew Salon and Spa in Uptown Altamont Springs, Florida, 407-834-1008. And ask for Gene, stylist and nail tech for racers and enthusiasts. RenewSalon.com, now carrying a wide selection of Moroccan oil and Bumble and Bumble hair care products. Renew Salon and Spa in Altamont Springs, Florida. Call 407-834-1008 and ask for Gene. If you're a blues lover and either own a venue or you have a friend who's involved in any way in one, you know the biggest problem when looking for great entertainment is finding quality musicians or bands that get it. What you wouldn't give to make just one phone call and have all your booking problems solved. Killstack Music Group is that one contact you need to make. From quality entertainment for your club to professional dealings with your management staff, Killstack Music is the answer. Killstack Music, representing quality bands and artists for years. Hit them up right now. Welcome at KillStackMusic.com or go online to KillStackMusic.com. Killstack Music, your first choice for the blues. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, your wait is over. Finally, hot rodding has come home to the hub of motorsports. Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Redline Ryan. And I'm the Taz Man. And we are Cruise Control Extreme. Cruise Control Extreme, Fridays at 7.30. Go to CruiseControlTV.com for a channel near you. Cruise Control Extreme, Charlotte's original hot rod show. 
Ginger Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC is your Lexington, Kentucky, and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC authority. From pre-owned to the newest models, Ginger Williams is the only place to shop in the Lexington area. Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC, located in London, Kentucky. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevrolet. Buick and GMC Authority. This is Heels on Wheels on the Performance Motorsports Network.com. Now back to the fastest ladies on two wheels. Hey guys, this is Katie from Beauty's Got Muscle. So currently right now Detroit is running their auto show. It goes on till the 26th. If you are on any auto enthusiast site, I'm sure you've seen the blasts of all the cars that are there that you're missing because you're not there. And if you are in Detroit, awesome, minus the fact that your city's in bankruptcy. Now, one of the cars that I saw on, well, of course, that I am very interested in is the Chevrolet Corvette 2015 Z06, which is the biggest pair of tits I've ever seen. It's awesome. 625 horsepower plus, and it's got all these jazzy aerodynamics added onto it. Uh, if you're looking for subtleties, don't ever buy a Corvette. That's flat out. And if you're looking for subtleties, then just go wear beige and buy a Prius. Blend in with the rest of the world. But here on Heels and Wheels, and especially with Beauty's Got Muscle, we believe in standing out and being yourself and being the unique snowflake that you are. The Toyota FT1 could be the gnarliest thing that I've seen in a while. And I know Kia's concept car that they released looks jazzy as all can be. And this is a big deal for me to be talking about uh, non-American automakers. So I tip my hat uh, just a little bit to them on that. I mean, they definitely get credit, but you know I am. My colors don't run. Red, white, and blue, stars everywhere in my eyes. The reason I'm talking about the auto show, or I bring it up, is I have some tips to offer when going to a car show. Now, if you're at a classic car show, there's only one rule you need to abide by, and it's no touchy. It's like the museums that you go to when you're a kid. Your mom or dad would tell you to keep your hands in your pockets or put them behind your back. I always opted for the one behind my back because it made me feel like an intelligent butler. Plus, I didn't like putting my hands in my pockets. Too hot. So... Uh, that only worked for so long, so it's up to the parents' priority to make sure that you didn't run around and touch everything. If you can't keep your kids' grimy mitts off of cars, don't bring them to a car show. That's my rule. Or keep them locked in the car that you came in and crack the window. Do not do that. I'm not supporting that or condoning that whatsoever because that is, I think, illegal and your kid could die, probably. So just leave them at home with Dora the Explorer. No, not her. Leave her at home with Looney Tunes, some good old coyote... And uh, the Roadrunner, or Bob the Builder. He's a good classic American worker. But at a car show like this in Detroit, they have cars for you to go and sit in. I don't know if you, any of you have ever been to any one of these. I go to the New York, uh, the international auto show that goes to New York every year in April at the Javits Center, which is a great time for me. I even get dressed up because it's just fun to go there and be pretty around cars. I love it. I dress up for the cars, mostly Chevy. So I like them to look, well, the cars to be like, hey, you're looking good. And I look back at the car and I say, you too. So when you're going to one of these shows, the first tip I want to give is to not get in the way of other people taking pictures. And then hopefully karma will reflect happily upon you and people won't get in the way of the pictures you want to take. If you do see somebody taking a picture, try and make yourself into a human wall and help them out. And that person, I guarantee, will remember you and just be like, thank you. Thank you for that. The people behind you may hate you, though. So it's a catch-22. You decide on the situation. I can't predict the future. I am not Miss Cleo. She is a fraud. The next big tip I will give is to collect as many pamphlets as you can from the car maker that you like. Become basically a pack rat. If they have baggies and they're giving out baggies, that's a gold mine. Go stock up, get the baggie, and put all of your pamphlets in there. Chevy, two years ago, actually no, Chevy does it every year. They do buttons. So if you go to the Detroit Auto Show, I'm sure they do the same thing there. They have buttons with all the icons and the logos 
of the cars, which is just my bread and butter, to be honest. And I probably have like 50 buttons each time I go. And I think by the end, like they knew I was just kind of hoarding buttons like a creep. Uh, but because of my Nen Nova tattoo on my arm, they really couldn't say too much crap to me because I was such a faithful customer. And I don't like to say customer. I feel more like a family member, like me and Chevy are, uh, well, at this point we're related. So collect pamphlets, dress pretty, just don't walk into people's photos, and uh, you should have a very good time at a car show. And remember, 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 going to a classic car show, no touchy. For the love of God, no touchy. That rule applies to life. You know, you could have many sexual harassment cases on you if you don't abide by the no touchy rule. So treat it like you would a stranger. You're not gonna go and rub and caress a stranger that you just met. And if you are, then you're someone I never wanna meet. Or, no, I don't wanna meet you. This has been Katie from Beauty's Got Muscle. That's about all the time I have today. Now back to the ladies filled with estrogen on high heels and who love the smell of burning rubber at Heels on Wheels. Thanks for all of that useful knowledge, Katie. I don't think any of us can stop laughing right now, so this might be hard to get through, but we're gonna try. So this week's Heels on Wheels roundtable discussion is going to be all about technology and cars today. Not just the racing technology, but even just normal street cars. And I know when I was reading this this morning, the only thing going through my head was, I really don't know if I wanna have a full conversation with my car. Now, Krista, when you sent me this, you were really excited or maybe angry that we even have to talk about this. What are your thoughts? Jesus Christ. You know what? I, I am an advocate of technology when it comes to building cars and technology to make cars on the road safer. But this is just getting absurd. I mean, think about GPS and smartphone car technology in your car, on, connected at all times. I mean, invasion of privacy much. And next thing you know, you are going to be streamed across the world picking your nose while you're sitting at a light. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I can deal with like things like Pandora and stuff like that that automatically go. We have... Uh, PMN is on AHA Radio in tons of makers of cars. Um, so that kind of stuff I don't care about. I like that. That's a good thing to have in your car. But the other stuff is getting a little crazy. Taylor, I, I he is great. talking about uh, monitoring your BMI and, you know, your blood pressure while you're driving. I mean, really? 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 <laughs> that's awful I don't even let the doctor tell me my BMI okay I surely don't want my car to tell me <laughs> well, well that's the thing I don't want my ta car to talk to me I really don't I want to drive but, but then again I'm kind of a purist I love to drive but I'm driving I don't want my car to talk to me and I don't want so many buttons that I can't find the horn you need See, that, that really makes you think twice next time you crank up the radio and start moshing out the AC and DC, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, and, and how appropriate that is, you would have no idea. But, um, no, I love, I love to have music when I'm driving, but it's, it's like I tell people, I, I barely like to have something to drink in the car with me. I am focused on driving, not on my cell phone, not on the radio, not on... Any little buttons or gadgets or anything. So, Okay, so I have a question for you, too. Uh, never mind what the car will now be able to do for you. What about the external invasion of privacy coming into your car and your little bubble in there? I mean, could happen. Yeah. I, I, are I, you talking about, like, with... Um, things that track your car or uh, oh black yeah, that i mean uh smartphone technology and gps tracking enables a world of True. possibilities um has its place on long trips but why does anybody need to know when you go to winn-dixie <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i i kind of feel <laughs> the same way i mean i like my gps but at the same time i only use it on long trips i don't need it when I'm driving through my hometown. I don't need people to know where I am 24-7. And I think, Krista, that's what you're getting at a little bit. I think sure. it brings in problems with people hacking it like they do everything else. And 
I, I don't want people knowing where I am 24 uh, seven. Do you think that they could relay uh, your data, uh, you know, from your driving habits to your insurance companies with, uh, without you knowing, I mean, infringing on your privacy? Well, of when course. I when I see my insurance bill go up, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Speed demon. We well, are on I mean, a racing course, show here. Anybody can hack it. Anybody can use information that's meant for one purpose for a different purpose entirely. So um, the speed data is the big one because anybody who can put your car on a computer can see what limits you've pushed on that car. Stacey, I want to bring up a really good point that you just made, hacking into your car. Okay, you know, you have high-end car makers like Lexus, for example, with cars that can technically almost park themselves. Do you think they could take control of your car? Sure, of course. But I'm very skeptical and cynical, and that's just me. Well, and i that's kind of what I was getting to. Like, you know, hacking is one thing. Hacking into my Facebook, hacking into my email account, that's fine. But when someone hacks into my car and can know where I live, where my parents live, all that kind of stuff, it's just, it's not safe, especially for younger people living alone, that kind of thing. I just, I really don't think it's safe. Look, they're talking about all this brand new state-of-the-art technology, and I'm still waiting for them to come out with the trunk monkey option. (laughs) So does that mean the next industry is going to be how to block those those features from being used? You might have just caught on to something there, Stacey. (laughs) That is going to be our next next job. We're going to be rich. (laughs) We're going to trademark it right now. (laughs) Heels <laughs> all wheels first. You heard it here. It's true. So I, I want to talk a little bit about, I was on MSN this morning and they had most exciting new cars of 2014. And I think this ties in a little bit. And some of them you, you kind of expect, you know, Cadillac, Jaguar, um, Mercedes, BMW. And then I saw Ford Fiesta and I stopped for a second and I'm like, Are you kidding? You know, th- it just yeah. doesn't it doesn't tie in at all. So maybe they're a little more technically advanced. I don't know, but something just doesn't add up there. Uh, I mean, Ford Fiesta has always been a a huge sporty econo box. I know that much. Yeah, I just it it doesn't really fit in with the list. And I'm like, you know, they must be doing something right. You wanted my guess from a Ford girl without even reading news? <laughs> Turbo car. Turbo all day. Ego There you go. Yeah, I just, oh my gosh, I could not believe that. But, you know, so back to what Krista was saying, you know, BMI, being on Twitter while you're driving and all that stuff. And so many states are outlawing using any kind of thing. So they're pushing this, you know, voice recognition. It just... I don't know. It's still not safe. You're still not concentrating on the road. That's my thoughts. So newer technology, Krista, yes or no? Uh, my car must speak Spanish because it still doesn't understand me on things. So <laughs> hell no. Stacy, I, I don't need it. I mean, if it's not improving the drive of the car, I don't necessarily want it. I'm not in the car to be entertained. And I also want nobody knowing when I go to the grocery store. I really don't. <laughs> All about that grocery store, yeah. I, yeah. I don't want people following me. All right, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Right from the Heels on Wheels ladies ourselves, no more crazy technology. So make sure you listen next week to hear more thoughts from our ladies. And that is a wrap for this week's edition of the Heels on Wheels radio program. We'll be back next week with even more amazing guests. Thanks to our guests this week, NHRA drag racer, Lindsay Cramsey, and female mechanic and car enthusiast, Jackie Barlow. Find out more about KDP and Beauty's Got Muscle by visiting www.beautiesgotmuscle.com or on Facebook. For more tailgating recipes, like Chef Sizzle and Scotty's Facebook page, facebook.com slash tailgate grillin with Sizzle and Scotty. To get more involved with us, like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash heels on wheels radio program. And leave us comments on our blog, www.heelsonwheelsradio.blogspot.com. Our hosts have been Jean Kinzerdana, Stacy Grammer, Chris Elise, and Emily Gotti. Thanks to our production engineer and programming consultant, Bob Steele. 
I'm the executive producer, Taylor Hyatt. Thanks for listening. And remember, take a kid to the races this weekend. Heels on Wheels is a copyrighted production of www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. A member of the Scorpion Radio Group, Incorporated, and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page, Heels on Wheels Radio Show, or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either PMN or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated. Be listening next week as the fastest women on the planet rev it up and talk racing. Hot, 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 hot.